Hey everyone, I am making this video to basically go over a lot of the skills and nuances of working inside of clay.com. And basically, in my opinion, if you could do all of the skills that I'm going to go over in this video, you will be a very proficient user in clay.com. And so what we have here is we just have some data that I downloaded from a data provider. And we are going to turn this data into a whole bunch of stuff. And so the first thing that we're going to do is I want to find these people's uh, LinkedIn profiles. So there are two ways that we could go about this. We could hit enrich data. We could pop down to LinkedIn and we could either use find people or we can find an enriched person from Google search. Now finding an enriched person from Google search uses two credits. Find people uses one credit. So we're going to opt for find people first. Now, when we click into find people, it says we need a company identifier, and that's either a LinkedIn URL, a company domain, or a sales navigator URL. And so we don't have any of that, but since we do have these emails here, we do have their domain. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to back up a little bit, and we're going to hit clay, and there is a extract company domain from email address function here that we're going to use. So then we're just going to click inside of the input. And we're just going to click on email to input that there. And then it's going to prompt us to pull this out. And so we're just going to get the domain. So we'll throw that in. And now it's going to run. And we're good to go. It just runs the first 10 rows just to protect you from burning all of your credits. But now we're good and we have the domain. So now we will go back to LinkedIn. And we'll hit find people. And now we have our company identifier. So notice how before all of our data ended at email, but now we have extract company domain from email address to pick from, and we have domain to pick from. So we're going to click on domain and then we are good to go. So for the job title keyword, we are going to insert their title down here. And then for names, we're going to put their first name and see how we put the token in for first name. Now we're going to add a space and then we're going to put last name. So we're all set. So we'll be first name, last name, their title and the domain will be set to go. So now we'll just hit URL, save it run first 10 rows. Hmm. And so we did not find all of the profiles, which not to worry at all when we go for the find people search. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go over our first conditional run. So find people found uh, basically four profiles here, but we want to finish the rest of them. The way we save credits inside of Clay is by using conditional runs. And there's other reasons why we use conditional runs. But basically what we're doing with a conditional run is if we have the data here, I don't need to run this one because see how it says two credits? I don't want to spend two credits if I don't have to spend two credits. So if there's data here, then this one isn't going to run. And, I'll show, and we're going to set that up using the run settings. So first we're going to make the search query be first name. And like I said, space last name. And actually we're going to put that in quotes. And then we're also going to put the title in quotes and we're going to put the company name in quotes. Now for run settings, we are going to use the AI formula generator and we're going to say, uh, and literally we're just going to type in only run this column if, and then backslash to pull up our inputs. If this is not empty, generate formula. And we are good to go. And it gives us a little bit of a preview. See how it says, you know, will this run? Uh, no. Oh, whoops. Actually, we got this wrong. Only run this column if... No. Oh, so sorry. Is empty. Whoops. See, we even make mistakes. That's why we have to use that preview. I was showing you how to use the preview. So basically, this is empty. Will it run? Yes. This is empty. Will it run? Yes. This is full. Will it run? No. Perfect. So we'll hit output is correct. Save formula. And now we'll just click continue to add fields. Again, we will just add this person's LinkedIn profile. There it is. And we'll hit save and run first 10 rows. 
And see how it says run condition not met? That just means that we are not looking for that person. And we are good to go here. So now we might want all of these LinkedIn profiles to be located inside of one table. Uh, and, and one thing I want to call out before that, if, if there's no profile found, a lot of times that just means that the profile is private. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, these are the ways to find these profiles. And so now we are going to merge the data in this column with the data that's in that column. The way that we'll do that is we'll hit the plus button and we get all of these different additional columns that we can add. We're going to add a merge column. And we're going to make this a URL. You don't have to do that. I'm doing it kind of just for the fun of it. So first, we're going to go to URL people. And then we're going to try just URL. And we'll hit save settings. And then we have all of our LinkedIn profiles right there. And so if we run all rows here, and we run all rows here, it is going to, this is going to wait for it to be no profile found here before it gets activated, which that's exactly what you're seeing right here. And then it goes out and it finds that data. And so this is just a little lesson in finding LinkedIn profiles if you don't have it, uh, as well as merging columns over here and some conditional formatting over here. Now, if you do have LinkedIn profiles, no worries. Do not do any of these steps. Just click on Enrich Person from LinkedIn Profile and map their LinkedIn profile here, and you're good to go. Uh, one thing to call out is that a LinkedIn uh, profile is a linkedin.com backslash in backslash, you know, James Tastelet, right? Or however you say that person's name. Uh, this is a LinkedIn URL. We call this a LinkedIn basic URL. There are also LinkedIn user ID and LinkedIn sales navigator profiles. If we look at this, this is what's called a VM ID. If you put this into LinkedIn profile, it is not going to work. And so if we click on any of these profiles, I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So the user ID, this person ID would be a input into enriched person from LinkedIn profile, like we were seeing before. And it doesn't look like we have the VM ID here, but the VM ID I showed you before. And so you usually wouldn't use that, but if you're like scraping sales navigator, you'll, you'll see that stuff come up. So uh, then you would just change your inputs so that you don't get a bunch of errors back when you're doing a rich person from LinkedIn profile. So always make sure you're using the correct ones. Next, what we are going to do is we got these emails from a data source. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean them. And if we don't find a valid email, we're going to attempt to find a new valid email. So we're just going to go to providers and we are going to go to debounce. And we're going to hit verify emails. And we are going to map the emails into the email section. Now, I only send to valid emails. So I am only going to use the safe to send email. So I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to hit run. And I'm going to take first safe to send email. I'm going to map that to the column. And then we're going to be good to go. So now it is running all of these emails. And see, when we find an email, it comes into this column. So now uh, we know that the email that we got from this data provider was correct. But if we want to get even more emails, we can use the clay find work email function in here to find even more. And so we'll just set up all of our inputs. And again, our run settings, we're going to account for the fact that uh, we only uh, run this column if, and then we're going to put email, first safe to send email is empty. We'll generate that formula. And again, we're just going to check. Okay, this is empty. It will run. Yes, this is full. No, it will not run. Okay, looks good. Output is correct. Save formula. And then we will just map the email. Great. So we are already starting to find more valid emails from our list than what we originally started from. And again, you can guess it. We're just going to merge these together once more. Uh, we'll do first safe to send email. It doesn't actually matter the order because of the way that we have this logic set up, but that's fine. We'll just merge it all into one column. Excellent. So now we have all of these email addresses. Again, just practicing finding email addresses. I always verify emails when I have it from a different source. And then I stop using any enrichment if find work email doesn't find it. 
The reason I do that is because find work email is essentially guessing Eric Noslavsky at clay.run, Eric.noslavsky at clay.run, Eric at clay.run, all of these different permutations of my name. And if that doesn't come back valid, then it won't return a valid email address. For me, I don't enrich it any further than that because if it doesn't come back with that, you're probably not going to get a good email from the other data providers. So that's why I check this second. These are valid emails, so I don't need to validate these again, and I'm ready to send to these emails. The next thing that we're going to go over is how to personalize an email using artificial intelligence. Now, I've made a lot of videos on this, but the main thing that I want to include is basically you need to know the basics of your prompt and you need inputs for your prompt. So we're going to write a first line based off of the mission of the company. Currently, we do not have the mission of the company in our uh, table. So, or the description of the company that we're going to derive this from. So we're going to go to our providers. We're going to hit LinkedIn. We're going to hit Enrich Company. And then we're going to map the company LinkedIn URL. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, we don't have the company LinkedIn URL anywhere. And actually, I, we do have it here. Um, and the way that we have it here is because when we did find people and we did find an Enrich person from Google search, we got the company URLs in there. and if you click into all of these, you will basically see, if we scroll down to latest experience, that we have a company LinkedIn URL right here. And so that is what we're going to use first, is that company LinkedIn URL. And so I will map the description so that we can do that nice and easily. And it's going to have a lot of missing inputs because we had find an enriched person and find people. Uh, like that, which is totally fine. Then, so we have this description here and this is all going to, to work out. So now what we want to do is we want to converse with ChatGPT. And we're basically going to say, uh, in one message, we're going to create a prompt. And so prompts all have the same format. I'm going to type it out and then I'm going to explain the, the prompt format. Right. And so I said, using the input, create a first line for an email about what the company's mission is. This is the input. Keep the output under eight words and use specific keywords from the input. Complete each prompt with my prefix. The prefix is this, blah, blah, blah. Right. So basically our format for prompts, for basic prompts, is just stipulate that you have an input and what do you want it to do with that input. Stipulate the input give it some guardrails to focus on, and then give it a prefix. And the prefix really helps increase the quality of, of your output. Then we'll go to run settings, and we want to make sure that it will only run if description is full. Now, if you ever only want something to run, if there's a data inside of the column, you don't need to use AI for that. You can just click on description, and when it's written like this, this will only run if description has data in it. So we'll just hit that, and we'll hit content. And then we will run and we could check out our content. I was on your website. And it looks like you help people combat clinician burnout with innovative solutions. Oh, what was it going to say for Lockheed Martin? I said, it looks like you connect customers with advanced technology systems. Yep, that's true. It looks like you help people achieve technology innovation and client satisfaction. Okay, awesome. And so that is a quick way of how you use ChatGPT and use that inside of your clay table. Um, and now here is a fun one. We are now going to find people at a company. And what we're going to do here 
is we are going to find a person at the company who is not the person that we're reaching out to. And the reason for that is I like to reach out to people. And if I'm reaching out to the CEO, I like to say something to the CEO. If I'm reaching out to the CMO, I like to say something to the CMO. And when I get to my final email, I like to say, oh, you know, I know there's a lot of people at the company. Is this something better suited to speaking with the CMO about, Jane? Um, or Susie, should I be speaking to the CEO, right? And we can basically name those things in there. So we'll use the company identifier and we'll do the uh, domain. Job title keywords, we'll just make it CEO, owner, president, uh, owner, president, founder, chief executive officer, co-founder, all of these things. And then we'll go and we'll say like chief marketing officer, CMO, head of marketing, things like that. Now, in order to not have any repeats of these people, and so see, we have all these people and it would be so embarrassing if we're reaching out to Ryan and we say, hey, Ryan, I know you're the founder of this company. Should I speak at it? Uh, speak to Ryan instead. What we're going to do is we're going to have a job title exclude keywords here. And we're going to exclude their title here so that while we're searching, we don't find a person who has the same exact title as them. Uh, and so then in that way, we know that we are bringing up a person that is completely new. And so now we're going to put the limit to just one. And then we could continue to add fields. We'll save and run the first 10 rows. And so now, again, we're just using find people to find these different profiles. And so you could see this person's name is Megan. And they are the whoops, vice president of creative. Awesome. And that came up because we typed in president. So you actually have to be like super clear uh, about your stuff. But so anyway, oh wait, this person is Christy, Megan. So they're not the same people, awesome. And they, they have a similar role. So then this is Pranand. And I don't know how to pronounce that name, but excellent, they're not the same people. And so this is, oh, the final skill that I would just wanna go over quickly is then you could send all of this data to anywhere that you are you know, building databases like Google Sheets or Airtable, or that you're sending emails from like Instantly, Lemlist or Smartlead. Um, I even like sending some of this stuff to Slack too. And so uh, that in that way, you would just set up all of your criteria. I like to edit this. I like to go straight down to run settings and run as button. I turn that on just so that when we input all of this, um, it uh, won't just automatically run, which Clay will start doing that. And uh, then you just input all of your text inputs like we just did and you'd be good to go. So hopefully I accomplished my task of if you have never used Clay before, this goes over a lot of the skills that you would need in order to be able to use Clay. We went over how to find a person's LinkedIn profile, how to set up a conditional run in case uh, we don't want to waste credits. Then we set up uh, email validation and then again, finding some emails and then we personalize some messaging and then we even found some more people at the company to personalize by. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions as always.